Hello again. So I just bought some fuses off of Amazon, which I believe could possibly be fakes. 1,000 volts, 500 milliamps, 6.3 by 32 millimeters, made in China. This is looking at the ad from Amazon. You can see UXL, 1,000 volt, 500 milliamp, white ceramic fuse. Notice in the ad they never mentioned that the fuse was made by SEBA. Come down to customer reviews. They have 10 reviews on it. Most 70% of them are 5 stars. Notice this very first review from Dusex. It says, even though the title said Amico, I received a SEBA brand. The second one down is from JKS. He says, this is the exact expensive fuse that I blew on my Ampro Bam 570 meter. Of course, I've tested a few Ampro meters and they do come with SEBA fuses. So I believe that these two fuses here are real. You can see one is marked FF, the other one is marked with an F. The difference is one of these is a thousand volt part. This is what we're trying to purchase. And the other one is marked 500 volts. Let's have a look at one of these. See the difference in the logo? So it is marked FF 500 milliamps, 1000 volts, same part number. You can see it does not have the RU marking on it. The next thing I noticed besides the font is there's a difference in the length of the fuse. If we look at the two fuses that I believe are actually produced by SEBA, you can see they are roughly the same length. So this fuse measures 1.235. So this measures 1.263 it looks like. Next thing I'd like to do is measure the weight. I'm going to start what I believe is the legitimate SEBA 1000 volt part. And now let's have a look at what I think is a knockoff. What I believe is the legitimate 1000 volt SEBA weighs 2.4411 grams. And what I believe is a fake SEBA is 2.3567 grams. The next thing we want to do is look at the DC resistance. So we're just going to be using our 34401. Again, we'll be starting with the 1000 volt SEBA, which I believe is the legitimate part. So we'll call it 1.1435. So this is what I believe is our fake SEBA fuse. Wow. If I can keep my fingers off it, we'll call it 0.6517. So this is what I believe is our legitimate SEBA fuse. This is the 1000 volt one. You can see I have it attached to my fuse holder. I'm going to be using the Bryman to measure the current through the fuse. And then what I'm going to do is apply 500 milliamps or the rated current through it. And then I'm going to measure the voltage drop across the fuse using the UT181. And then we'll use this DT9939 from SEM to measure the body temperature. Alright, so that's been a minute. You can see the temperature's gone up slightly. We're now at 31 degrees C. The voltage drop is also slightly higher at 705 millivolts. And of course we're putting out roughly 504 milliamps now. This is what I believe is our fake fuse. Let's just go ahead and apply the same amount of current. And look at the voltage drop. So 362 millivolts. And again I'll let this set for about a minute. What I'd like to know next is what's the breaking current for this fake fuse. So let's just have a look. So again, you can see the Bryman is attached in series with the fuse. It's set to the amps mode. 
and again the UT181A will be looking at the voltage drop across the fuse currently you can see we are at 600 milliamps and we are dropping 452 millivolts it's roughly 710 milliamps and we are dropping roughly 564 millivolts so we're at 797 milliamps and we're dropping roughly 675 millivolts so we're at 900 milliamps we're dropping roughly 1.01 .01 volts now the fuse is actually quite cold still And we can see the voltage now is starting to climb. It's at 1.2 amps. Oh, and there it opened. So it looks like we blew it open at roughly 1.25 amps. Next thing what I'm going to do is use this Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to remove the end cap and we can look at the filler that's inside of the fuse. Alright, it looks like it does have some filler in it. At least it's not an unfilled fuse. Let's just look at the thickness of it. Looks like about 40, call it about 45 thousandths thick. If we look at the OD of the ceramic, this measures roughly 0.225. Looking at what I believe is the real SEBA fuse, you can see it is 0.217. Here we're looking at SEBA's data sheet, and the part that I have highlighted is the one that we're interested in column on the right is for the fuses that I purchased cost on these is five dollars and ninety cents each again the length was slightly shorter it's a little bit larger diameter it was slightly lighter and notice when we look at the DC resistance there's quite a bit of difference between what I'm calling a real SEBA fuse in this counterfeit part the real part measures 1.144 versus 0.652 ohms and again if we refer to the table the voltage drop that it calls for for this particular fuse at 500 milliamps would be 650 millivolts. With 500 milliamps we measured roughly 705 millivolts drop across this particular fuse. On our counterfeit fuse we measured 367 millivolts a drop. Again this is about half of what the data sheet calls for. So my original plan was to take this last fuse connected to our transient generator apply one of the transients off this half cycle line simulator and see if this fuse actually explodes or not. Unfortunately I realize a lot of people are going to complain that that test really isn't applicable to them. What I thought about doing instead is to run a time test with this. So for this particular fuse it falls in this category here between 100 and 800 milliamps and we can see on the far right at 10 times the trip current, in this case 10 times 500 milliamps or 5 amps, this fuse should open up in no more than 6 milliseconds. So to simulate this, I have an old National Instruments regulator. This is an LM338. And I've just configured this as a current source. So the way this works is you take the output through a resistor and then back to the adjust pin. And this becomes your output current source. And the output current then is equal to V ref, which is the internal voltage reference of the regulator, divided by this resistance. The V ref for this regulator is 1.25 volts. 
So I'm going to set the resistance to 0.25 ohms and that will give us approximately a 5 amp output. Then what I'm going to do is feed this through a large contactor and I'm going to place our fuse on the output of the contactor and that's going to simulate you touching the leads of your meter to some source that you probably shouldn't have. And this is just going to be attached to my power supply and I'll have a push button here that will enable the contactor. This is my LM338 regulator. What I'm using is two half ohm resistors in parallel to get my 0.25 ohms. This is my large contactor. This is my push button to trigger it. Again, I used this contactor when I was testing some fuses previously. And what I have here is just a 1 ohm resistor that I'm going to use to simulate the fuse load. So I've got the Bryman again in series with the output of this. So when I enable the contactor, we should get roughly 5 amps out of the regulator. See, we're close enough, about 4.96. The problem is, is we want to be able to measure when the fuse opens up. So we're going to be using an oscilloscope for this. And I'm also going to be using this current probe. This is the UT210E. Now this particular one has been highly modified. I've added a oscilloscope output. But the other main thing I've done to this is increase this probe's bandwidth to about 100 kilohertz. So if we attach this across our output. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and enable it. Of course it's the wrong polarity. <laughs> Alright, one more time we'll trigger it up. So the scope is currently set for 20 millivolts per division or roughly 2 amps per division. And you can see we're at 2.5 divisions up or roughly 5 amps. So the amplitude of this doesn't have to be all that precise. We've already validated the output of the current source using the Bryman. So what we'll do next is remove this 1 ohm resistor. What I'm going to do is install one of these 1 amp cartridge fuses. And then hopefully what's going to happen when I push this, what we should be able to see is how long the current maintains at 5 amps before the fuse blows open. So let's give it a try. There you have it. This is 100 milliseconds per division. So you can see it's blown open in just under 300 milliseconds. What we'll do next is install this last fuse here. And let's just see what happens. Again, this fuse should open up in under 6 milliseconds. And just for a reference, it looks identical to the first fuse that we looked at. What I've done is I've changed our scope to 10 milliseconds per division. Hopefully we'll be able to actually catch it with it. We're set to single shot. And here you go. 3, 2, 1. Wow. Look at this. So our break time is roughly 12 and a half milliseconds at 5 amps and this is about double what the SIBO manufacturer calls for so my concern with using a fuse like this is again the fuse has two purposes one is it's a safety fuse so under very heavy currents in this case it's rated for 30 kiloamps up to a thousand volts AC or DC this fuse should be able to break that type of circuit the other purpose of the fuse is to actually protect the circuitry it's attached to. In this case, your multimeter. And the designer of your multimeter is going to pick that fuse, so it should protect the circuitry and the meter. Unfortunately, if you buy a fuse like this, now all of a sudden this time extends out double what the designer of the meter had expected it to. It could actually end up damaging your meter. So unfortunately, this particular fuse, I'm saying, is definitely a counterfeit. I don't know why they market SEBA. It's obviously not. It doesn't meet any of the specifications that are called out in the data sheet for the SEBA part. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you found it useful. Later.